I would like everybody, wherever you are, tune in to this station now. Great power is in the word of God. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only say the word. Only say the word. And my soul shall be healed. There's going to be a transformation. I thank my Lord Bishop for permitting me to be here. I thank Monsignor. I thank the organizers for inviting me. I continue to thank God for our Archbishop, who was my teacher, who taught me logic, taught me philosophy. 
and impacted in my life while we were in the seminary 27 years ago. Can we give God a praise clap offering? Without taking much of your time, I want you to join me as we climb the mountain of transfiguration. Somebody hear me. The word you are going to hear tonight will transform you. Can I hear you shout a very loud vibrating amen? amen. Psalm 150 says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of trumpets. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with timbre and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the pipe. Praise him with the clashing of cymbal. Praise him with resounding cymbal. Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Oh my God. Praise is a sacrifice. Praise is a sacrifice. Praise is an act of offering to a deity something precious. Praise is a sacrifice. Offering to a deity something precious. Man cannot digest praise. Only God can digest praise. No man should allow praise to enter the stomach or else you will burst. Only God has all it takes to handle praise. Listen to me. Praise is a sacrifice. And this evening I want to share with you a short message I have titled Praise as a Living Sacrifice. Somebody say living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. Sacrifice, as I said, is an act of offering to a deity something precious. Sacrifice can be divided into two. We have the bloody sacrifice and the unbloody sacrifice. The bloody sacrifice has to do with killing the shedding of blood like that of uh, Abraham and of Jesus Christ himself. The lamb of sacrifice that was slain. The unbloody sacrifice has to do with offerings of different kinds, including praise, the offering of gift, the offering of, of whatever that you want to give to God. It can be sacrifice. Now, I want to tell you three unique things about praise. Three unique things. Because we are not here to joke. Personally, I'm expecting an extraordinary move of God tonight. And I believe that through this praise, all of you have come here. You are not living here the same again. If you believe, lift up your hand and shout amen. You will never live here the same again. This praise will bring about testimonies in your life. Wave your hand wherever you are and give God the mightiest hallelujah. Now hear this, number one. Praise starts with a right understanding of God based on his word. That is why you just have to listen attentively. Knowledge of God is very important in praise. Knowledge of God is very important in praise. You cannot praise God if you don't have a proper knowledge of him. When you know God, then your praise can be focused. You need to understand God. Like the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So number one, you need to study the word of God. You need to know a lot about God. And that will go a long way to make you give God a living praise. Number two, praise includes a growing reverence for who God is. Which in turn imparts fine wisdom to us. Praise and taste names of God as you respect him, worship him, find to yourself in your relationship with him. 
you begin to discover that praise has a lot to do with your experiences of who he is. The experiences you, ex you have in life. The way you encounter God, the way you experience God will determine the words, the language, in short, the name you use in describing him in your worship. When you have not encountered God, when you have not known God, your worship will not be a living one. You need to encounter God. For instance, after Abraham encountered God by God providing the lamb for sacrifice, a name came up, the God who provides. What name would you like to give to God after this program? What kind of name would you like to call? What name will you give to him based on your experiences? Is it the God that gives husband? The God that gives children? The God that heals? The God that protects? The God that transforms? The God that uplifts? The God that opens door? The God that can make a way in the desert? Oshimliatata, Olodumari, Isiatonaba, Gaganogu, Ojenamo, Ezemo, Odogu. Can somebody shout? It is my prayer. That after this unusual praise, you will have a special name for God. You will have a special name to call your God. Based on your experience. Based on your own personal experience. Listen to me. Praise includes intense desire for the Lord. It is in encountering God that you have the ingredients of praise. It takes divine encounter. To have the material to praise God. It takes divine encounter to have the material, the ingredients to praise God. You don't prepare a soup with lesser ingredients. The more you have the ingredients to prepare the soup, the better. The better the soup will be. So if you want to praise God, you got to praise God based on your personal encounter, your experiences, your desire. The more you are longing for the Lord, the more you desire to know him, the more you desire to serve him. And God begins to make himself available. Now hear me now, listen to me. Why I said, after this night, you must have a name for God. In other words, there must be an intervention of God in your life. There must be an encounter tonight. There must be a change in somebody's life. There must be a change in your marriage. There must be a change in your business. Let me tell you, as you worship God here, God will send his angels from heaven. They will dance and dance and dance and enter your family. They will dance and dance and dance and enter your business and begin to do something glorious there. If you believe, lift up your hand and shout amen. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there were people who believed in praising God. Even though they were in the burning furnace, they were in the fire. Because they were praising God, an angel danced and danced and danced and landed into the fire. The presence of the angel in the fire changed the situation. If you can lift up your hand and say amen, a very loud amen, God will change your situation. As you praise God tonight, as you worship God tonight, your situation will change. Your situation will change. Your situation will change. Your situation will change. In the mighty name of Jesus. What the power of praise can do. What the power of praise can do. I will quickly give you of seven of them. Quickly. I will not explain. I will just run them down. What power of praise. What praise can do. So I want to believe that you are not just here to waste time. I want to believe you are not just here to dance. You are not just here just to sing. You are here with a spirit of expectation. Tell your neighbor, expectation. Say expectation. Yes, oh child of God, you are here. Filled with a spirit of expectation. That as we worship God, great things will begin to happen. Great things happen when God misses with men. Here, number one, praise gets our mind focused on God, not on ourselves. Some of us have been messed up. We have lost focus in life. As soon as you begin to praise God, begin to worship God, you see God refocusing your life. Somebody's life here will be refocused. Somebody's child's life will be refocused. That your husband's life will be refocused. God is going to refocus somebody's life because praise gets our focus 
off ourselves and then back to God. As you worship God, you begin to see the glory of God. Because as soon as Peter lost focus, he started sinking. Many of us are sinking today because we are not focusing on God. But when you begin to praise God, you lift up your hands and you are singing, you forget about yourself. You forget about your situation and you begin to focus on your creator who has your spare parts, who has a master plan of your destiny. And that is why I say, as you are praising him and you are looking at him, you begin to walk on the waters of life. You will not sink in Jesus' name. I say you will not sink again in Jesus' name. Number two, listen to me. Praise brings us into a place of humility. Praise brings us into the realm of humility. And humility is the mother of all virtues. When you come into that realm of humility, you have conquered the devil. The moment you begin to praise God here, and you are broken, and you are broken, you enter the realm of humility. The devil cannot pass through that door. So as you are praising God, acknowledging God as the essence of your existence, as the reason why you are living, telling him that without you I am not in, not the money in my account, not the pure water I drink, and you become humble, I tell you solemnly, you will know that praise, number three, brings about the presence of God. The Bible says, God inhabits in the presence of his people. In the praise of his people, rather. If God is invited when you begin to praise God. That is number three. Number one, you get focus off yourself and on God. Number two, it takes you to the level where the devil cannot reach. And that is the level of humility. Number three, God inhabits in your own midst. God is going to manifest himself here. God is going to manifest his presence here. God is going to show himself here. As we praise God, God will show himself here. Anyway, if you believe, let me hear you say loud amen. No, I'm not sure. No, 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 no. Listen to me. I don't know. If you believe that you, this unusual praise of this year, that God will show himself here, lift up your hands and give him a loud amen. testimony miracle happens when we praise god acts of the apostles chapter 16 from verse 25 down to 26 paul and silas were praising god and as they were praising god the presence of god came and there was deliverance anybody here who is in bondage in any kind of bondage as we praise god tonight that chain will be broken i said that chain will be broken in the mighty name of jesus now hear this now if this can happen through praise, why are we not multiplying in miracles? Why are there not so much testimonies? Why are there not so much joy and victory? The answer is simple. Many of us, many of us do not offer a living praise. Listen to me now. Many of us don't offer God a living praise. Yes, we dance, we sing. We are filled with emotions, but we don't offer him a living praise. We don't give him the kind of praise that we make even God to dance in heaven. Who are those who can give God a living praise? What do I need to do to give God a living praise tonight? Why is it that my praise has not been performing the kind of blessings you have mentioned? And the word of God says in Psalm 33 verse 1, praise which we are offering to God today, it's not for everybody. Praise, it's not for everybody. Praise is fitting for loyal hearts. If you want your praise to move mountain, you must be a loyal person. You must be someone who is obedient to God. You must be someone who obey God. You must strive to obey Jesus. You must strive to obey your Lord and your master. You must give your life to Jesus. If you are not sincerely loyal to God, then your praise is an abomination to God. If you are not obedient to God, if you are not loyal, if you are a disobedient child, let me tell you, your praise will not move mountains. But if you are loyal, 
If you are loyal, your praise will be so powerful to bring down a lot of blessings. I pray that God will give you and I a loyal heart now. I didn't say tomorrow now. I'm not talking about tomorrow. Hear me? That God will give you and I a loyal heart now. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Heavenly Father, I stand as your priest. And I pray for your sons and daughters whom you have gathered here to praise you, to bring down your glory. Oh my God, this salvation is now. I pray that you give everyone here a loyal heart in Jesus' name. May God give you a loyal heart. He said, I will take away the heart of stone and I will give you the heart of flesh. The heart of flesh is the loyal heart. The heart of stone is the disloyal heart. And praise is fitting for only men and women with a loyal heart. Receive loyal hearts in Jesus' name. Let that stone disappear from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, say amen. Now bring down your hands. Now listen to this. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, hear this now, from verse 1. The Bible says, now the Israelites went out to fight against the Philistines. The Israelites camped at Ebenezer and the Philistines at Aphek. Verse 2, the Philistines deployed their forces to meet Israel. And as they battled with Israel, Israel was defeated by the Philistines who killed about 4,000 of them on the battlefield. Verse 3 says, when the soldiers returned to the camp, after 4,000 have been killed, the elders of Israel asked, why did the Lord bring defeat on us today before the Philistines? Why? Why is there no testimony in my life? Why am I living without testimony? Why are my children frustrating me? I know I serve God. I worship God. I praise God. I sing praises every morning. I book the sacrifice of the mass. I go for novena. What is happening to me? Why has this happened to me? And the Israelites said, Let us bring the ark of the Lord's covenant from Shiloh so that he may go with us and save us from the hand of our enemies so the people sent men to shiloh and they brought back the ark of the covenant of the lord let me tell you but what like what happens during our corpus christi when we carry the blessed sacrament and we are moving along the streets you know how we sing hosanna hosanna we keep clapping because we are walking with our god that was what happened the israelites embarked on praise worship because the ark of the covenant is coming into the battleground so the Israelites went to Shiloh and they brought the Ark of the Covenant. The Lord Almighty came into the temple. Oh my God. Enter the battlefield who is enthroned between the cherubim and the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. When the Ark of the Lord, listen to this, when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant came into the camp, all Israel raised such a great shout that the ground shook they shouted they praised god can somebody shout now can somebody give a shout now when the israelites were worshiping god and as they were praising God, and as they were moving around the walls of Jericho, the Lord said to them, after you have praised me for a time, after you have praised me for a time, open your mouth and shout. You have been praising God, now that your heart is a loyal heart, can you lift up your hand and shout? I want to let you know, as you are shouting now, every barrier will be destroyed. Every stronghold will be destroyed. Every tower of Jericho in your family, every wall of Jericho in your marriage, every wall of Jericho in your business, in your spirituality, shall fall down flat. Somebody shout! Friends in Christ, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant, into the battlefield when they brought the ark of the covenant into the battlefield they were praising god and they were shouting but unfortunately something terrible happened that is why i said a lot of us are offering god 
dead brains. God forbid that we shall gather here tonight all night long with our sheep shepherd, with priests and religious. The whole church we gather. The glory of God we gather. And we are praising our God. And somebody here, you are going back under the affliction of the devil. We are not here for carnival. Whether you like it or not, it is a spiritual warfare. We are here to win our battle through praise. If you believe, shout a loud amen. You are here to get your husband through praise. You are here to get your business established through praise. I am here to ask God for more rank as I work for him as his soldier through praise. You are here to get your son come back to his normal sense through praise. You are here to get your stomach swollen up in the name of pregnancy through praise. You are here to get that sickness run out of your body through praise. If you believe, stand up, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. Somebody say, I will praise my God. Sit down with expectation. Something happened. Unfortunately, the word of God says in verse 6 and 7, hearing the opera, listen to this. The Philistines asked, What all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? When they learned that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. The Philistines were afraid. Let me tell you, powers of darkness, powers against the church, powers against your family, powers against your life and your destiny, they are afraid because of this gathering. But we must give him a living praise. They said to themselves, be strong Philistines, be men, or you will be subject to the Hebrews. As they have been to you. Be men and fight. So the Philistines fought. Unfortunately, the Israelites were defeated. And every man fled to his tent. Hear this bad news. Hear this bad news. Hear this bad news. Unlike the 4,000 that they killed before. Hear what happened. The slaughter was very great. Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers. 30,000. The destruction increased. The affliction increased from 4,000 to 30,000 souls lost. Unfortunately, the ark of God was captured. And Israel's two sons, allies two sons, that would have been priests, Hophni and Phinehas, they all died. Oh my God. You see, when you don't give God a living praise, our prayers will be captured. We go home empty. All the money invested in this war, wasted. The sacrifices, wasted. This is not a gathering of the social musicians. I don't want to mention names. This is a sacred thing. A sacred thing. Now hear this. The fact that the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines and they slaughtered the Israelites. Does that mean that the Ark was powerless? Does that mean the Ark was powerless? I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. The answer is capital. No. So when we gather here, and we praise and praise and nothing is happening does it mean that praise is powerless no. to prove that the act was not powerless listen to what happened the act demonstrated power on its own praise can demonstrate power on its own the act demonstrated his power because when they captured the act this man carried the act into their temple the temple of their God called Dagon. The word of God says, early in the morning, when they enter their temple to worship their God, with the impression that their God has given them power to conquer our God. They realize that their 
God, the statue of their God is on the floor. Ah, they say, what happened? They carried the statue of their God and placed it back beside our God. Beside him, there is no other God. Lift up your hands. Alpha, Omega. Beside him, there is no other God. Oh my God, I love what my God did. I love what your God did. This time around, I think God in anger gave the statue of the God of the Philistines, Dagon, just an Abel. Someone say Abel. I pray that through praise, God will give that power of darkness holding you and your family an Abel. That barrenness will receive an Abel. That disease, HIV, leukemia, sickness, all kinds of infections will receive a divine Abel. And they will be destroyed forever and ever. If you believe, can you give God a sevenfold amen? Two, three, four. The ark demonstrated his power in the temple of Dagon in First Samuel chapter 5, from verse 2 to 5. Then they carried the ark into the Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early in the morning, there was Dagon falling on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and put him back into his place. But the following morning, when they rose, there was Dagon falling on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord, his head and hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. Only his body remained. That is why to this day, neither the priest of Dagon nor any other who enters Dagon's temple step on the threshold. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of God, I want to let you know that praise carries power, not minding how you dispose yourself. But it is better for you to dispose yourself and enjoy the power therein. As they had seen this power of God, they released the ark. They released the ark. They released the ark. They said, let the ark go. Let the ark go. They released the ark. And the word of God says, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, hear this. This may interest you. From verse 14 to 15, David brought back the ark with praise. And hear what happened. We are in a linen airport. David was dancing before the Lord. I saw the Archbishop dancing. I saw Monsignor dancing. I saw great men dancing. I saw great women dancing. I saw the women dancing. I saw, and I said to myself, I must dance. Ladies and gentlemen, you must dance to the Lord. You must praise God today. David was dancing. Hear this. This may interest you. David was dancing. He was dancing as they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant. They were shouting and they, was, they were blowing trumpets for our praise to be living. Our praise to be living. It must come from the heart. While David was doing this, something happened. The word of God says, the son, daughter of Saul, Mikai, was angry was disappointed in what David was doing. Just like some of us, when we gather to praise God, we are posing like big men. We are too big to shake our body. When they are singing, we are too big to shake our body. It's for those who are spiritually young. No! No! As they are praising God today, make sure you participate with your body, your soul, and your spirit, that your sacrifice of praise may be a living one unto the Lord. David danced before God. David connected his body, connected his soul, and connected his spirit. Unfortunately today, many of us focus on man. We want people to congratulate us after singing. We want people to appreciate us after dancing. We dance to make people happy. We look at people while we are dancing. We want them to see us. We are worried and we feel very unfulfilled when we sing and dance and we are not appreciated by man. The reason is that at this point, 
praise is not being offered as a living sacrifice. If you are dancing for people to appreciate you, you are shaking your body for people to admire you, you are singing for them to clap for you, you are not offering it to God. When your praise is offered as a living sacrifice, anyone who despises you or insults you or laughs at you is in trouble. Because at that time, it is a living sacrifice unto God. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16, we are told, as the ark of the Lord was dance moving, and David was dancing, the son of Saul, as I said, look through the window, look at the statement she made. The Bible says, she despised David in her heart. And in verse 20 and 23, when David returned home to bless his household, Mikai, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, how the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave guests, of the servants, as any vulgar fellow around. He, she insulted David for praising God. And the Bible says she never had a child. The punishment was that she never had a child. When your praise is a living one, oh my God. When your praise is genuine, when you are not praising to, to make people clap for you, you are going to experience miracle. As I draw this message to a conclusion, I want us to take this home from our senior brother, St. Paul. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing perfect will. Our God has done many praise worthy things, but he hasn't done them for us to be thinking that we are praising him too much. Hear this. Does God need affirmation or motivation or encouragement? He doesn't actually need anything since he is God. However, he has given us a way to praise him that justice to him may be made and we are blessed. He becomes beneficial to us. The preface of the week, weekdays in ordinary time for reads, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Today, the Lord is calling you to make your praise a living sacrifice. The Lord is calling you, and that is the end of the message. The Lord is calling you to make your praise tonight a living sacrifice with your soul and your mind and your body. In other words, be loyal, reconcile with God. Monsignor you know, has asked me as I end this message, I should make a short altar call by you lifting up your hands. If you know you are here, you are telling God, I want to be a loyal servant, I want to be a loyal daughter, that my praise tonight, because all we have done is pray humble. You are about to enter the main praise. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Stand on your feet and say, Father, give me a loyal heart. Jesus, give me a loyal heart. I want to offer you a living praise. Say it after me. I want to offer you a living praise. Jesus, give me a loyal heart that my praise may be a living praise. Do not allow me to spend this night in vain. I will not spend this night in vain. May my praise unto you bring down your glory. May my life be transformed. There are many things happening to me I do not know. But I know that through praise that you will grant me my heart desires. You will give me a new beginning. You will transform my soul. You will transform my family. You will transform my business. You will transform my children. As I praise you today, I am not praising for man to clap for me. I am praising that you, God, will be exalted. If that is your prayer, say a loud amen. I pray that our blessed mother, who knoweth how to praise God, 
who knew how to worship God will join us in tonight's worship. When she received the good news of what God will do through her, she said, listen, my soul magnify the Lord. That means praise is beyond the physical. Don't just be dancing and be sweating. Make sure your soul and your spirit is involved. And through that, you will give God a befitting praise worship. We're going to sing a song of prayer. Lord, prepare me. Humble yourself. Lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Pure and holy Try the true we thanksgive him. I'll be a living. Say it, everybody. Sanctuary for you. Come on, give God the praise. Shout here. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy that? Our usual praise. I'm going to encourage you all to text yes to the number numbers on your screen. Text yes to the numbers on your screen. Still to come. Same on TV. Same as on TV, same as on TV, reaching the world. Same as on television, reaching the world.